Thank you, Tatiana. So we move further. So we invite now Anna Manovins, Manovins to explain us what is Angar. A lot of people know what's Angar, but Anna will explain us a bit deeper. Anna is a director of the AAVC, Provide Foundation, and also Angar Center of Visual Arts and Production and Research. She's an independent curator and producer with uh, uh, preferences for hybrid roles at the intersection of writing, research, programming, project support, institutional analysis, and exhibitions. Welcome, Anna. Hello, everyone. I will do something terrible I will read because I was very worried with the, with the time limitation and I'm afraid I, was, I maybe tried to say too much, but there is also a lot to say when, when addressing Angar's relationship with the intersection art, science and technology. For some reason, the footnotes fell from my presentation, so if everyone has a specific curiosity, just let me know at the end and I'll let you know what it is. So, Angar is an environment an environment is made of the circumstances, objects, or conditions by which one is surrounded. It includes all the factors that act upon an organism or an ecological community and ultimately det determine its form of survival. From that viewpoint, Angar's mission could be summarized as being that of creating, maintaining, and I underline this word, maintaining, or readjusting the conditions for art artistic practice and research to survive, or maybe more ambitiously, to grow in ramified consequences. Angar is a backstage environment. We are not so much concerned with presenting results as with ensuring their conditions of possibility. This environment is made, made of a series of labs, including a construction lab, a software hard, uh, hardware and interaction lab, an interface and network lab, or a wet lab. It is also made of a series of regular grants and open calls, among which, for example, we are also partnering in with CERN and its residency through the Collide program. But most of all, this environment is shaped by the various practices of its inhabitants, communities, and user. Angar is a node of nodes or a knot of knots. Angar's community, uh, sorry, Angar hosts 18 artists, four resident collectives, and five orbitant projects. We invented this category, the orbitant category, uh, to name and set up gravitational modes of sustained engagement with external initiatives. And next to longer term presence and accomplices, there are the very many artists, collectives, and organizations that find in Angar the necessary conditions to develop, share, or present their work. Their cohabitation functions like a permaculture of sorts, whereby those practices, as the community they gather, some uh, feed each other. Angar is response-able, and I use response-able with a hyphenated, uh, with a hyphen that Donna Haraway plays between response and able. Angar is a kind of sensing apparatus, this is why I put an image of mediums, we try not to prefigure the needs of our context and community, but rather pay attention to what is needed and cater to that instead. Since needs evolve and change over time, Angar cannot be but a shifting environment. Angar is a shape-shifting institution. Among the many threads that could be brought to the fore to illustrate this shape-shifting or this responsiveness, considering the framework that is bringing us together here, I will briefly and fragmentarily, probably too briefly, and to fragmentarily sketch out how, Angar has, how Ang Angar's bond with science and technology has morphed over the last, I said 20 in the title, but we realize it's already 25 years. In the late 90s, Angar, Angar's appearance coincided with the emergence of video practice, interactive practices, and net art. The center was committed to providing access to new technologies in artistic production, strengthening the production and post-production resources for mul multimedia projects, and setting up the first media lab. Back then, the media lab, the media lab symbolized a step from individual, individual action to collective action. It was a space or laboratory dedicated to activities and production that stood halfway between activism, artistic production, and dissemination in new technologies. During that same period, a pioneer experience was set up in the domain of digital arts, the creation of an archive for net art. In parallel, during those years, quite some energy was put to was put in providing access to and knowledge around the digital treatment of images and video production at a time where the technologies for audiovisual recording and editing were not so widespread and affordable. 
Between 2005 and 2009, Angar opens up to urban activism, queer feminism, experimental music, and, and especially, it opens up to the communities related to free software. Angar starts to function like a hub for communities that sometimes become research groups, focusing on the possibilities of free software, but also feminism and post-porn, as yet other forms of understanding technology in, technologies involved in the production of imaginaries. It was also then, um, sorry, Angar was an absolutely singular and rare space within the Spanish context, context, only finding mirroring endeavors in media labs, such as the ones that were already in place in the, in the US or uh, like at MIT or in the Netherlands with V2. In 2006, Angar acquires its own server and starts a consistent growth as it's still very much uh, at the core of the center today and whose political relevance, I believe, has only increased, which is that of digital sovereignty. sovereignty. Between 2010 and 17, in a self-instituting gesture, Angar added the word research in its description, thereby becoming Center for Production and Research. Ever since then, Angar has been advocating for artistic research as a singular mode of research. This advocacy involved bringing to friction the artistic domain with the academic and scientific domain in order to set up processes for shared research. An example of this would be the program Prototype Ome, an interdisciplinary collaboration on do it yourself or do, do it with other biology, bringing together Angar with Barcelona Biomedical Research Park. Another example would be Angar's involvement, invo involvement sorry, in the European project Soft Control that was conceived as a window where artists, scientists, and other cultural operators would open up their laboratories and research processes. In defining itself as a space for research, Angar has also been defining its own research trends. These ha they have included robotics, bioart, or interface politics, among many others through the years. It was also during that period that Angard started the, the articulation of networks and clusters for research, bringing together art, science, and technology-related university, not only to develop shared programs, but also to have a certain policy-making effect. Articulating contexts where traditionally segregated domains of knowledge production collide has been Angard's mode of undertaking the task of identifying and keep expanding the notion of artistic research. It is not only about artists, that are concerned by science and technology matters, or about artists that use certain technologies. It is also about testing hybrid methodologies, infrastructures, terminologies, and apparatuses. The advocacy for artistic research is also a way to bring to the fore areas of knowledge production and transfer that usually fall out of, of academic valuation criteria. More generally, Angar found in the fold between different creative and scientific domain its, its comfort zone. The center has always been providing the conceptual and practi practical conditions for in-between practices to develop. An example of this is Audio Formal, a research and program strand dedicated to practices that, strugg that struggle to exist between the context of art and that of the music industry. Or as yet another example, the European project on the fly at the intersection between arts, computer science, and technology was set up to support the development of live, live coding practices, a sound and visual creation technique generating a technological appropriation through, through the use and development of free and open software. Perfecto. I started this accelerated presentation by describing Angad as a center that maintains a certain environment. I would like to end by sharing a, cur a current working hypothesis. Today, governance is not, not as much exerted through ideology or discourse, discourse, but rather it is increasingly embedded in infrastructures that establish what is possible and what is not. They are usually reproduce, they meaning the infrastructures, are usually reprodu reproducing the probable rather than opening up to the possible. From that perspective, the maintenance of infrastructures, their analysis, repair or readjustment is a space for political erup eruption from which not only our working conditions but our living conditions could be renegotiated. And one of the infrastructures, infrastructures that has one of the strongest gov governance power nowadays are technological infrastructures. There is hardly any pressing challenge today 
could be addressed without thinking about technology. This is why the intersection art, science, technology is somehow now placed under a perfect storm. For institutions such as Angar that pioneer the critical approach to technology, the way in which we are summoned to this conversation can only be by further strengthening this critical awareness and keep artistic imagination afloat to divide possibles that can induce a glitch in current infrastructural prescriptions.